The dark as well as the light power serves only one master who is the creator of all that is and whose goal is to create the superhuman. The final goal of human reincarnation is to create a human being who has experienced all imaginable positive and negative experiences and therefore is able to develop beyond any judgment into the humanly incarnated image of God. A human being who has become God has lived through the completed range of the cosmic keyboard from the lowest to the highest note. God does not judge. He shines on his creations like a sun, on the flowers or the weeds or on his being. The experiment of duality has come to an end and the planet Earth is an ascending planet onto which the Creator himself incarnates in the shape of human beings. The return of the ascended brotherhood from Lemuria and Atlantis is the return of the 144,000 masters of light, the cosmic monads. They are incarnated as human beings, united and together they will represent the white pyramid, God's eye, who sees everything, the presence of the Almighty on Earth. They are the open witnesses who have all described from a different perspective the process of ascension since they have already lived through it before. What the f You ever wonder why Jesus was born in a manger? Because this is the old spiritual allegory of astrology. The suns travel through the ecliptic in the 12 houses. This is when the sun is reborn after going through the winter solstice is right here between Sagittarius the horse and Capricorn the goat. This is an image of a Masonic seal. Here's the two pillars. They're not the same. The sun and the moon. The pillars were something that people were pointing out at my house that they didn't look even, but I'm thinking now they just don't look the same. So this is my house, there's the moon, and each pillar has three markings. From the front of the house, you can see that each pillar has the sun, sun rays, and the moon. Oh, and the top of our house is a triangle. But I'll get into that more later. Has anybody seen this on CNN today? At uh, 7.13 p.m. Pacific time, it says uh, the firmament blocks rapture Christians from entering heaven today. I mean, it's, it's hard to find the rapture inside of here alone. I think the rapture should be postponed, man, until further notice. I think that we should postpone studying the rapture and, you know, focus on the great tribulation because uh, they got blocked today by the firmament. Yeah, bro. Sorry to break it to you, man. I don't think that happened. I think I think maybe you uh, came across a meme or just a fake screenshot from CNN and uh, accepted it as reality, unfortunately. Which, which you know, no judgment, man. No judgment. I'm sure I do it all the time watching these videos. I'm sure I'm, I'm always watching shit that isn't real and trying to justify in my mind, like, make it make sense, which a lot of the time it doesn't. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm pretty sure that didn't happen, dude. There's an interesting way of travel in Egypt, and it's not on a boat. It's in these. These are giant granite boxes. This one's an Edfu temple, and it's a throne. The temple itself shows you how to use these boxes for solar travel. You don't enter the temple from your temple, the two sides. You enter the temple from the center. Center is the corpus colossum that links the two hemispheres together. So symbolically, when you link the two hemispheres together, you earn yourself a widget. Widget comes out of the third eye, the one that can see the snakes. The wisdom of the snake is the physics of vibration today. Now the box is on the boat because the box carries you through the wormhole. That is the boat. That boat sits on the vibrations of the microcosm, the atomic, and the macrocosm, the galactic. So how do you interact with all this? The physical layers of your body are what you're inhabiting right now. The nervous system animates this matter using a mysterious force that science will not recognize. Closest analog that we have would probably be plasma. That invisible body is called the Merkaba. Mer being the light wave. The Ka and the Ba are your individual expression of the entire spirit of the universe. Merka Ba is the vehicle used to surf those waves like Kelly Slater. Everything is working in Taurus or donut form. Electromagnetic link is the stream or channel that's created by the Earth and the Sun. 
you're watching this video right now, you're on the shore, you're out of the stream. Into the stream means to get in a boat. It's so wild how ancient cultures essentially created things as references to like our brain or our mind or just anything like that. Like to create like a temple that like represents the brain is such a crazy concept. Like it's literally like an artist's representation of something. It's insane. And in order to do that in a way to preserve the history is honestly just amazing. It's incredible. Everything was designed here for a reason. The frequencies were designed for certain reasons. Let's talk about the sun. The sun is 5.9642 gigahertz. Add those numbers up. What do you get? 26. 26 in Gematria represents the divine. Then you go into water. Water is 100 terahertz. It represents, if you look at Gematria, according to the Hebrew alphabet, 100 because we don't count the zeros. It's one. One represents the oneness of the universe. Your body is 70% water. The planet is 70% water. You think it's a coincidence? In the document, it says there were 666,666 pyramids before the Exodus, and today there are less than 100,000, which is known, by the way. There are many pyramids all over the place. But why the 666,666? The number 666 represents the number 18. 18, according to Hebrew gematria, represents life. Earth's radiation is 7.83 hertz. Human beings, 7.83 hertz. Now, if you take if you take 7.83 and add the number up, you will get the number 18. As you know, the number 18, again, represents life. Every number has a frequency. Every number has certain energies. Also, 666 in the Bible, I believe it says... 666 is the number of man it's like i don't i don't know where the number of the beast thing came from but i'm fairly certain the bible says that 666 is the number of man or number of a man something along the lines of that and it's actually the um representation of carbon too which we are carbon-based life forms because carbon consists of six electrons six neutrons and six protons creating carbon which is like all life in the universe that we're aware of are carbon-based life forms. So I don't necessarily think it's an evil thing. They told us that we are never ever to fly over that hole and we are never to discuss it again. What is that about? And does that have anything to do with all these other pieces that keep emerging that there might be something archeological in Antarctica? According to ancient astronaut theorists, this was not the first time a massive hole has been spotted in the ice of Antarctica. Famous polar explorer Admiral Richard Byrd allegedly reported seeing a massive entrance to an underground world during his 1947 expedition to the South Pole. Admiral Byrd made a lot of unusual statements, allegedly talking about a large opening at the South Pole that went deep inside the Earth, ice-free, and was inhabited by various sorts of aliens. What would happen if aliens attacked Earth? They would land in the west of the U.S. and instantly begin their world domination campaign. Since the world would hear this pretty quickly, this will send everyone into panic mode and cause the whole world to finally unite and work together to beat the aliens. However, even with the United World Army, this battle would be impossible. Aliens would have special weapons and spaceships, which would demolish the human forces and take their whole land. The only thing humans could do is surrender, but that isn't the end of the story. Since the Earth would be inhabitable for the aliens, the only thing they could do is make a peace deal with the humans and leave the planet. The treaty stated, the aliens would not interfere in our affairs and we would not interfere in theirs. We were particularly interested that they do not interfere with anything that would affect our future. We would keep their presence on Earth a secret they would furnish us with advanced technology and would help us in our technological development. They would not make any treaty with any other Earth nation. They could abduct humans on a limited and periodic basis for the purpose of medical examination and monitoring of our development with the stipulation that the humans would not be harmed, would be returned to their point of abduction, that the humans would have no memory of the event, 
and that the alien nation would furnish MJ-12 with a list of all human contacts and abductees on a regularly scheduled basis. It was agreed that each nation would receive the ambassador of the other for as long as the treaty remained in force. It was further agreed that the alien nation and the United States would exchange 16 personnel each to the other with the purpose of learning each of the other. The alien guests would remain on Earth and the human guests would travel to the alien point of origin for a specified period of time. Then Not only is that absolutely insane to think about, absolutely crazy, but I absolutely believe that that is happening. That we have made a deal with some sort of extraterrestrials to allow them to study us for whatever reason. Which is wild. The scariest mythical creatures in the world. From Arizona. Skinwalker. From the ocean, mermaid, from Japan, Tick Tick, from Puerto Rico, Chupacabras. I didn't, I didn't realize I was an AI voice until it couldn't pronounce Cthulhu. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. Here's what the Bible really says about the apocalypse. Thousands of years ago, God destroyed the earth with water. But next time, it will be with fire. Fire will rain from heaven, and the earth will melt with intense heat. However, the Bible reveals something even more shocking. It prophesies the release of the four horsemen who will bring death, destruction, famine, and chaos across the world, spreading fear and despair. Wars, plagues, and natural disasters will increase, signaling the approaching end times. People will be deceived by false prophets, and nations will rise against each other. If you believe we're living in the last days and the Bible's message is real, follow now and type amen in the comments don't forget jesus return is closer than you think amen now share this video with someone you love so god can protect them yeah i don't want any of that to happen but all of that's already happening so <laughs> oh man i mean can't we all just get along can we all just be good to each other just be a nice person help one another not take advantage of each other not be mean to each other. Be realistic. I mean, that's that's the world I want to live in. I don't know about you, but uh, we got a lot of work to do.